here is a cotton pillar pack and um, obviously it cuts a piece of candy travels down and it's wrapped in this film here and then it's ejected from the end we have safety features on it which will include an emergency stop which as you can see kills everything we also have highlighted caution areas where just it gives you an awareness that it's going to get hot or there's a potential pinch point this is a guard here to obviously cover it to stop your hands going anywhere near the cutting blades here we have a guard switch which obviously if the machine's in motion and then that guard's lifted that then will stop any moving parts guarded under that area once the guard's replaced it will then run and start the electrical panels the warning stickers on just to make you aware that there's voltage behind there we've also got warning sticker on the isolator obviously the isolator kills everything on the machine and as, as it's isolated the machine will then go dead the power supply to this particular machine is 415 volts which is on a three-phase socket obviously where this is going it's on it'll be a one ton supply into a transformer which will then transform it up to 115 volts this is just a quick demonstration on how to feed the film through the set of rollers. Obviously you can have over roller number one, back and over roller number two, obviously where the print registration is. It then goes back over roller number three, then back over the drive roller, back round the drive. back over this one and down into the folding box then fed through the folding box and then it has to be pulled into the, the drawers I use a hook just to help it up just so I can get control of the film You will waste a couple of packets obviously doing this but it'll, once it's through the cutting doors it'll then line itself up and get you your, your perfect tube and obviously the, the film will line itself up on the rollers you can adjust the film obviously if it's not centralised in and out by twisting this knob here and obviously counterclockwise will bring it towards you and clockwise will take it towards the back of the machine look here closely obviously your piece is driven along here and it's cut through the cutting blades it's then pushed onto the chain with this pusher here it needs to be pushed obviously so the, the first piece has passed it but not too soon before the second one catches it so ideally when the, it's just passed it it's then pushing the product into the line Obviously if you find the product size is too large and you want to reduce it down obviously you break the backing nut on this and you'll turn that counterclockwise to push the roller down and obviously the opposite motion to lift the side of the piece up. This is the thickness in relation to the piece. Obviously if you get bunching up between the two pieces you'll then need to lift this one up slightly and lower that one down and balance it between the two so it drives your rope nicely. Obviously if, if your film runs out and you want to change the roll of film, these levers here obviously help. They release the film out of the drive roller and then you can remove it all and change the roll of film. 
this adjustment here is for the dwell of the machine. Obviously, as the blades are in their horizontal position, the film is then driven at that point. Um, it, obviously, the, the longer the machine pauses, the, the more chance for the, the dwell to work. You release the dwell like so, and it's adjusted in and out, obviously, till you get your film so it's feeding at the right speed. The transfer between the two pieces that can be adjusted in the back of the machine. Which is these slotted areas on this drive gear. Obviously it's slotted to allow you to increase or decrease the position of the chain. This drive gear here is for your cutters and your fin seals. So obviously if you rotate that forward or backwards that'll speed up your cut or reduce the speed of your cut. This is the control panel here, obviously start the machine, stop the machine, this is a speed controller which will speed up the, the whole movement of the machine. We've also here we've got your fin seal heat and your crimp seal heat. Your fin seal is the rollers in there and your crimp seal is it on the jaws in the where the cutting blades are. To change the settings on these, you press the set button and it's down as follows or up as follows and then press set and that will constantly stay around that temperature. This is your controller which is setting your cut length. Obviously your bag size is set by this here which you then move the cursor along and change any number you need to. It's now set at 51 millimetres. The position here is preset at 36. That position shouldn't need changing at all. Obviously when it goes back into the main screen it'll give you, once the machine's running, it'll give you how many pieces per minute it's running at. It'll also tell you a cut length and it gives you an output of how many you've produced. And you stop the machine here. Obviously turn the controller on and off it's here. That's the controller off. This is for your print registration, which is that's your print registration there, that's on and off. Obviously turn your heaters off. That's followed. We've already discussed the itch and the stop, but obviously that cuts everything off from there. It does tell you that the machine is still alive, but everything stopped from from the ice later onwards. Maintenance nine on the side of the machine. Obviously, this is the main gearbox, which has an oil pumped around all the moving parts. This is filled with MP150 or the equivalent uh, gearbox oil. Um, obviously, it's a sealed sump, um, so it probably just wants checking every 12 months, uh, making sure the levels are still high enough. All the driving gears in the back of the machine, you can see, are all greased up. They just want checking regularly, make sure they've, they've got plenty of grease on them. Obviously, any moving parts need greasing regularly. 